it first, it starts off telling us what to do. The scripture starts off telling us what to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Boom. There it is right there. God bless you, facts. There it is right there. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your path. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your path. Everything you do, acknowledge him. I talked about this a little bit yesterday. Everything, when you get up, go to God first before you do anything. You get up, Lord, what's going on for today? Will we, you know, just give him some type of recognition, some type of attention. Let him know that you're seeking him first before you get into your actual day. Um, and it's interesting, too, because after that, uh, lean not into your own understanding. Hi, brother. <laughs> after that, lean not into your own understanding. Um, it says, be not wise in your own mind. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil, evil I believe. Like the Lord does, you know, that we get ourselves in trouble when we try to figure things out on our own. When God wants to show you himself. You know, we got to get out of his way. You know, we be in his way a lot. Amen. Let me see. Let me see what's going on. Is this a, my, one of my Russian pals? How is your evening going? It is great. Kakula. Dobre utra. Ah, you don't know how to speak Russian and Ukraine. Dobre ranuk. I don't know the writing, but I do know some of the language. Um, but yeah, it says, let's do this. I just want to read it real quick. <sighs> trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek him. Seek his will in all you do. And he shall. He will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. So it does say that. I just want to make sure. I just wanted to make sure. I just wanted to make sure. Let me see what he, what we say here. Yes, I have a more. Uh, yes, I have a morning. <laughs> I know it's morning over there. That's why I say uh, so. Dobre utra, right? Or if it's nighttime, dobre dien, dobre dien. I don't know what time it is in Russia, but yeah, dobre, dobre. <laughs> um, but yes, God bless everybody that has pulled up on tonight. I just need hours, um, um, y'all. Uh, I'm about sixteen k away, but most importantly, I got to get these hours. To even get anything on this app, this app, oh, this app, man, they came through yesterday for me. I was not expecting that. God is good. God is good. <laughs> God is good. Okay. All right. Um. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> I, I try. I try. Um. Get a show. Is that how you say it? Oche, get a show? Get a show, get a show, get a show. That means, how are you doing, I believe? Get a show. Um, yes, but yeah. So, today we got to, today we're going to be up and down. If you're standing up, sit down. If you're sitting down, stand up. Uh, it's one of them kind of playlists. Um, you know, God just gave it to me. I said, I'm, I'm obedient. We're going to do it. I'm, yes, I do. I'm a, uh, actually, I'm a gospel rapper. I'm going to get around to it one of these days. The people that know, they know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so God is good. I, um, I do, I think we might have a, a smidge bit of guy of, uh, Bible study, just a smidge. And I wouldn't even consider it a Bible study. Um, just something I wanted to point out. Um, it's, we see this going on a lot, uh, with this, with religious people and religion and all these different religions in the same body, you know, you got all kind of different religions that believe in Jesus in some form of fashion, Israelites, Mormons, Jehovah witness, Christian, uh, Baptist, um, um, uh, uh, what else? It's a few more Catholics, you know, things like that. But anyways, we gonna get into that later. I just seen some. I was watching a video on on um, Facebook, and I was led to do some uh, my own research and uh, dig some nuggets out, dig some nuggets up out of there. Um, 
and I just I might be sharing it a little later here. But for the most part, welcome everybody. Appreciate y'all all showing up. I'm just here to really just get these hours out the way so I can uh capital get this 30 hours and cap it. Make sure I got it. We getting too close to the end of the month. Things like that. But yeah. So with that being said, y'all, let's get right into this. Y'all share the live. Follow each other. Follow me. I'll follow back. Uh, yeah, let's do it. And God bless y'all. God bless you, sister. You good? Honesty. Selena. Moms. Faithfully. And hold on, y'all. Let me. Let me. Oops. I pushed the wrong button. Let me look at these names. I'm over here cheating. Mom Faithfully, Mama Faith, D Crabs, Michaela, Jesus First, aka Kiki, Sister Pam, Always Faithful, um, Honesty Always, You Good, Sister Ra Ra, Hammer Time, and Selena. Oh, we can't forget Attention and Trey Walker. God bless you guys. Thank you, sis. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that it is much needed um let's go let's go um i want to talk about something it might get a little controversial maybe and i hope i don't have to be here i hope i'm not in here too long god i'm just being obedient to what you showed me what you told me so i'm gonna do what i gotta do um i was watching Woo! thank you sis <laughs> appreciate that i was watching a facebook video um, at six o'clock this morning, um, and in this Facebook video, it was a uh, two Mormon brothers, two I mean two white guys and a Israelite brother, black guy, and this Israelite brother had his Bible out, going in on these Mormon brothers, right, telling them about you know uh. They're the, you know, I gotta be I'm trying to be very careful about this, but I, I gotta show, I need to show you something. And I would encourage you guys to do this too. When you hear people talking about scriptures and using these scriptures as weapons against each other, please take your Bible out and read and read the whole, always remember this. This is for somebody read the whole chapter. People like to grab something out the Bible and say it but they don't read above it or under it. Just that one little piece. And they like to use that as the end all weapon against somebody else. So I'm watching this um, Israelite brother going in on this Mo on these two Mormon brothers. Now, I'm not here. I'm not sympathizing with Mormons or Israelites. I'm a believer. You know, I don't, I don't, I try not to fall under any jurisdiction when it comes to religion. I just believe that, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So I believe that Jesus died for everybody. I just want to put that right there. Y'all see it spiritually sitting right there. Now, this brother is going in on these uh, Mormons. For y'all that don't know, I'm pretty sure everybody knows what Mormons are about. They come to your house on Saturday morning two white guys with bicycle helmets on. <laughs> they come to your door, knock and try to tell you about Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, Joseph Smith looked into a, thank you, sis. Thank you, Sister Selena. Joseph Smith looked into a hat and an angel told him to write the Mormon Bible or something like that or a salamander or something. Something came to this brother when he looked inside of a hat and now we got Mormon religion. Now, what these, for a little backstory on Mormons, what they do, they send these young kids to a camp for two years. They cannot talk to their parents. They cannot use the phone. All they can do is write letters. For two years, they're instilling this Mormon religion in these kids. And then they come back out here, knocking on doors, trying to save, get you saved, but you are not allowed to go into their temples where they worship. You can go in the foyer. Black people can go in the foyer, but they can't go in the temples where they worship. Now, that's the Mormons. The Israelites, they think that they're the only chosen people. God hates everybody else except them. The white man is the devil. The white man is Esau. So you got these two individuals 
the Mormon brother, when I seen the video, the Mormon brother didn't say anything. They weren't talking. This Israelite brother had this Bible out telling them how they was wrong about this, wrong about that, calling them Esau, telling them uh, he just kept finding all these Bible scriptures, finding all these Bible scriptures and just slamming it at these Mormons, slamming it at these Mormons. And they, uh, 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 they couldn't say nothing, right? Um, now, and, now, mind you, a lot of people was watching this video as a Facebook Live video. They were saluting them. They were, yeah, you got them doing that kind of thing, right? And I'm sitting here watching this video and something in my spirit just was not right. I'm like, I'm, I mean, yeah, you, 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 you mentioned in Jesus Christ, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I couldn't, it wasn't. It wasn't making me want to glorify the Lord. Have you ever heard somebody talk about the truth about the Bible and you get excited too? Well, when it comes to the Israelites, I hate doing this because they're probably going to come in here and start attacking me. When it comes to the Israelites, they are very angry and hateful towards other races other than black people, Native Americans, and Mexicans. If you white, you the devil. This is what they believe. If you are white, you are the devil. You are Esau. You know, you know the, man. So I'm watching this brother go in. He grabbing the scripture here. And, then, and, and, and the Mormons are just like, uh, they didn't, you know. Now, if you don't have a relationship with God, you would think that this Israelite was getting them. Oh, he read them. Good job for knowing your Bible, Mr. Israelite. But this is not the case. What people don't understand is those Mormons and stuff, these people, all of those different religions, they are brainwashed into believing what they believe. They don't, they're not giving you Jesus Christ because they felt the presence of the Lord and felt impelled to preach the gospel. These kids go to a camp at a young age and they are there for two years learning the ways of Joseph Smith and Jesus Christ and Jesus, the church of um, Latter-day Saints and all of this stuff. So when this Israelite was getting on him, it looks like, oh, he getting them, you know, and I, and I said, God, you got to help me with this because I believe in you. I love you. I know that Jesus was a his. I know that Jesus was the Israelite. I know all of this. But why is it this Israelite religion? Why are they so mean to white people? Why are they? And I'm not. This is not a. Uh, I'm trying to. Um, you know. Suck up to white people or anything like. That. I'm just trying to. I'm a. I'm a straight shooter across the board. I. Don't, I am not racist. I believe that God created everybody. Black, white. Yellow, everybody, he created everybody. He didn't just create black people and this other races just popped up. So everybody is children of God. So as I'm sitting here watching this, I'm like, this brother is going in on these. I feel bad for the, uh, for the, for the, um, uh, what are they? For the Mormon kids, right? So he goes to this scripture. Now he he's revved up. Now he like, yeah. And your people, you know, he's doing this to this white boy. And, and he says, and have you, what about, have you read, um, Romans chapter 13, verse nine. And then he pulls it out and he says this. Let me, let me cause I had to, I, I got it, I got it. Romans, no, Romans nine, I'm sorry. Romans chapter nine, verse 13 says this. Says this, where's 13? It says, in the words of the scriptures, I loved Jacob, but I rejected Esau. He used that and then he said, Esau, you white people. So, you know, these Israelites, maybe white people are Esau, whatever. But these Israelites call white people Esau. I don't get into that. I'm not, I'm not a person that's stuck in the Old Testament. I read the whole Bible. When I read the things of the Old Testament and how things work, when I get to the New Testament, we become thankful for mercy, grace, and Jesus dying for us. That's what this New Testament is all about, to save us from the Old Testament. A lot of people don't know this. The New Testament saves us from what things happened in the Old Testament, but these this one group they stay in the Old Testament and the rules and regulations and laws of the Old Testament. So he uses this Matthew chapter 13. I mean, he uses this Romans chapter 13. I mean, chapter nine, verse 13. You, he said, in the words of the spirit, I mean, in the words of the scripture, I love Jacob, but I rejected Esau. So God said, keep on reading. So I kept first off, 
I went to the beginning. So we're going to go to the beginning of this whole reason why this brother said this to these white brothers. So in the, he's because, because the Israelites, I got to keep going with this backstory. The Israelites believe that they are the chosen and only people that are chosen by God, but that totally contradicts the scripture for God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. I had to put emphasis on world and whosoever because God so loved the world. He didn't say for God so loved the Israelites that whosoever is an Israelite shall not perish. But it didn't say that. It said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, which was an Israelite through the seed of David physically. And, you know, when it comes to physical human, he was born Israelite. For God so get, loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes in him, not just the Israelites. Um, so it goes on to say this. These that mind you, they think they the chosen people, right? Watch this. Listen to this. Uh, Lord, help me read this right because you know my reading be kind of off. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. God's selection of Israel. It says, with Christ as my witness, I speak with utter truthfulness. My conscience and the Holy Spirit confirms it. My heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief for my people. My Jewish brothers and sisters, I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ if that would save them. Listen to this. Listen to how he's breaking this down. That would save them. He says, they are the people of Israel chosen to be God's adopted children. Watch, listen to the words. Chosen to be God's adopted children. God reveals his glory to them. He made covenant with he made covenant with them and gave them his law he gave them the privilege of worshiping him and receiving his wonderful promises abraham isaac and jacob are their ancestors and christ himself was an israelite as far as him as far as his human nature is concerned and he is god the one who rules over everything and is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. Then it says, well, then God has. So he's, this is like a question being asked. He's saying, well, then has God failed to fulfill his promise to Israel? No, for not all who are listen to this right here. Here it comes. Here it comes. Uh, this is Romans chapter nine, verse one. I'm at verse uh, six, verse uh, seven. Now no, it's at verse six. He says, well, then has God failed to fulfill his promise to Israel? No, for not all who are born into the nation of Israel are truly members of God's people. So, so that let, got you, got you, got you. Uh, I will definitely pray for you um, if you're still here after I get done doing this. He says, it says, it says, no, for all who are born into the nation of Israel are true are truly not messy I told you no for not all who are born in the nation of Israel are truly members of God's people let me stop right there it's clearly saying just because you come through the seed of Abraham does not make you God's chosen people this is what they believe they believe because they came through the seed of Abraham which all everybody did um, they feel that they're the chosen one. So it tells us the scripture is saying right here, no, for not all who are born into the nation of Israel are truly members of God's people. Being descendants of Abraham doesn't make them truly Abraham's children. For the scripture says, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Though Abraham had other children too, this means that Abraham's Physical descendants are not necessarily children of God. Only the children of the promise 
Only the children of the promise are considered to be Abraham's children. For God had promised, I will return about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. It's talking about the story about Abraham. So then it says, this son was our ancestor, Isaac. When he married Rebecca, he gave birth to twins, but before they were born, before they, before they had done any good or bad, she received a message from God. This message shows that God chose people according to his own purpose. Read that again. God, a messenger, God gave Rebecca this message and this message said this. This message shows God has chosen people according to his own purpose. So right there, I'm going to just stop right there. If God has chosen people according to his own purpose, what makes a person, person think that they are, <laughs> that they are, oh, we the chosen people of God. How do you know God chose people according to his own purpose? Yes, God doesn't call the qualified. Exactly. He calls he qualifies the call. Exactly. You come on, come on. You came in at the right time. So watch this. It says he calls people, but not according to their good or bad works. She was told your older son will serve your younger son. Ooh, in the words of the scripture. See, here it is. This, this is where he used this scripture against that Israelite. I mean, uh, against that Mormon. It, verse 13, it says, in the words of the scripture, I loved, I loved Jacob, but I rejected Esau. Are we now watch this? Here it goes. They're going to break down. It says, are we saying then that God was unfair? Of course not. For God said to Moses, I will show mercy to anyone I choose. I will show mercy to anyone I choose and I will show compassion to anyone I choose choose god does this it is it's not one set group of people we know that israel the israelites are the adopted people but god chooses who he wants to choose so we have to stop letting them go around we are the chosen people of god you are cursed you are esau the devil they they out there they're they're harming and hurting and breaking people down making people feel like they're not worthy to be in God's um, army. They're not worthy to be in God's group. They're not worthy to be a part of God. Who are you to say who is and who ain't able to be a part of God when, when the Bible clearly tells us in John 3, 16 that he loves the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And let's get back into it. It says, we are saying are, it says, are we saying then that God was unfair? Of course not. For God said to Moses, I will show mercy to anyone I choose and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. So it is God who decides to show mercy. We can neither choose or we can, we can either choose it or work for it. There's nothing you can do to make God be like, I like you better than I like them. So this same scripture that this Israelite brother tried to use on this Mormon brother, if he would have kept reading the word, he would have got stopped in his own tracks, but he didn't. He used the All he used against these white brothers was God chose Jacob and he rejected Esau. And I guess Esau was white people in the Bible. I don't know. Uh, you know, that doesn't even mean nothing to me because Jesus died for everybody. It ain't about black, white. Asian, Mexican, it ain't about, it's about believing in Jesus, you are saved. All that other stuff is confusion. All that other stuff is division, the work of the devil. So he tried to use this scripture. He tried to use Romans 9 and 13. God accepted J uh, Jacob and rejected Esau. But if you keep reading, when you get to 16, it says, so is God, so is it, no, it says, so it is God who decides to show mercy. We can neither choose it nor work for it. For the scripture says, oh, here it is right here. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Exactly, exactly, uh, Cali Karma, exactly. You hit it on the nose. Um, it, it says, for the scripture says that God told Pharaoh, Pharaoh, <laughs> said God told Pharaoh, I have appointed you for... I have appointed you for the very purpose of displaying my power 
in you and to spread my fame throughout the earth. So you see, God chooses to show mercy to God chooses to show mercy to some and he chooses to harden the hearts of others. So they so they refuse to listen. Now, let me stop right there. We got this is a moment to give God glory that your hearts aren't hardened. Listen, it isn't that people um who, the ones that need to be saved, let me say it like this, the ones that need to be saved will be saved. Do you know God has hardened the hearts of some of these people that you chasing down, trying to get them to come to Jesus? They ain't going to come because God hardened their hearts. So we got to bless the name of the Lord for not hardening our hearts. We could have been in that category of people that, and we once were, watch this, we once were, like, I don't want to hear nothing about that God stuff, man, that stuff is fake, now I'm believing all that. We once were those people, but it's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. We were already called, we were already called, we just didn't know it until we answered the call, and something inside of us made us said, made us say, you know what? No, I don't want to be somebody that don't love God. Now, when these people with hardened hearts come to know the Lord and they say, I don't want to be the person with a hardened heart. That starts the relationship with God right there because the conviction has hit them. Wait a minute. I don't want to be one of these hard hearted people that don't want to hear nothing about God or want to do it the way I want to do it. God clearly used Pharaoh. This is, this was very interesting that he said this. He says, so the scripture says that God told Pharaoh, I have appointed you for the very purpose of displaying my power in you and to spread my fame through the earth. So, so you see, God chooses to show mercy on some and he chooses to hearten the hearts of others. So they refuse to listen. Well, then you might say, why does God blame people for not responding? Haven't they simply done what he what haven't they simply done what he makes them do? No, don't say that. Who are you to who are you? A mere human being to argue with God should the things that should the things that was created say to the one who created it why watch this why have you made me like this when a potter makes a jar of clay doesn't he have a right to use the same lump of clay to make a jar for decorations and another to throw garbage into so listen we just got to be excited about being those that love the Lord. I hate to say it like this, but if you listen to that um, analogy, basically it said the same hands that made the pot to, as a decoration is the same hands that use the same lump of clay to turn a pot into a trash can to throw garbage in. Do you see the pot that's a trash can complaining about the trash being thrown into it and the pot that's, um, that's been used for a decoration bragging about being better than the pot? And this is what these Israelites do. We are the chosen ones. You're trash. They want, you know, they want to be seen as better and chosen, but God called who he called our hearts is connected with him you don't have to ooh, watch this you don't have to be chosen the way the old testament religion say we the grace and mercy of jesus christ given his life for us is what saved us um how does that scripture go what is a man that lays down Something about a man that lays down his own life for his brother. This is what Jesus did. This is the reason why we have the Old Testament. This is the reason why God sent Jesus. Because if God didn't send Jesus, there would be a group of people looking down their nose at another group of people. Aha, we're the chosen people. You're not. And on top of that, listen, if you really have the love of God in you, why are you excited about people that don't know God? These, you know, I, I, I don't do religion. I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm a believer of everything that he done in that word. Religion, these, these Israelites, these Mormons and all of these type of people, these Israelites are excited that they're chosen and other people are missing out on that. If you know the goodness of God, why would you not want somebody to be a part of that? Why would you want somebody? Listen, say you were chosen. So, okay, I'm gonna let, let me. I would feel bad if I if I was chosen, but Cali Karma wasn't. But she wants to love the same God that I love. Nope. You, I, I know you love him, but nope, you ain't chosen. No. 
Stop letting them feed y'all this mumble jumbo. I've been watching them. Uh, I've been watching a lot of them. They're going in front of these churches and calling out pastors. Watch this. They're standing in front of churches calling out pastors with bullhorns and a Bible. The Bible clearly tells us, do not quarrel or debate. So why are you standing in front of people's churches? This is pagan. This is, and you know, bothering these people, these people love the Lord. If they wrong about it, God is the judge of that. If they're not doing it right, God will correct it. Why do we got these, these army of mean people going around telling them, you not chosen, you not going, we chosen. You know, it's mumbo jumbo, y'all. We are free. Ain't we thankful to Christ for setting us free? Watch this. Let me, let me, let me, because it gets, it gets better. It gets good. I'm about, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. I didn't want to stop right there and go too hard. It says in verse 19, it says, well, then you might say, why does God blame people? Oh, I read that. I'm ready. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go to verse 21. When a potter makes a jar of clay, doesn't he have the right to use the same lump of clay to make one jar? for decorations and another jar um, to throw away, to throw garbage into. In the same way, even, watch this, watch this. In the same way, I'm getting too excited. In the same way, even though God has the right to show his anger and his power, he is very patient with those on whom his anger falls. Watch this, who are, des who are destined for destruction. He does this to make the riches, he, he does this to make the riches of his glory shine even brighter on those whom he showed mercy to, who are prepared in advance for glory. And it says, and he among those, he says, and he among those whom he selected brought from the Jews and the Gentiles concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy of Hosea, watch this. Those who were not my people, I will call my people. Ooh, read that again. Those who are, so all of this, we chosen and you not. Well, if you not chosen, it clearly tells us right here in verse 25.